Hello everybody and welcome to another Minecraft plugin tutorial series. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to spawn holograms and it's going to be pretty cool because we're going to be adding support for hex colors. If I type in slash hologram, I'm actually able to use a very simple syntax, no adventure API, no dealing with the complex mini message whatsoever. That's the first benefit and the other benefit is you're able to have different lines such as this one. And the third benefit is that when you stop the server and you connect to the server again and you reload it, these are actually persistent. So you don't have to keep some sort of expensive maintenance system and the best of all that they work on most Minecraft versions, even the oldest one. First things first, let's create a hologram command. I have already made a skeleton of this command class because this video is not about commands. We do have a free lesson on how to make commands in this very YouTube channel. Please go check it out right now if you struggle making commands. All I'm gonna say, if you need to learn Java and you need to learn basics of Bucket, or you want to take it one step further and make mini games, animated GUIs, custom entities, enchants, and all bunch of stuff like that. We teach over 200 topics in the course called Project Orion. The link to it is in the description. Now, I have made a skeleton of this class and I've also registered this in my plugin.yml. Look, looks like this one works as the usage says. So I type in slash hologram or slash holo, and then I can type in different lines and I can split them via the vertical line. Instead of having a space right here, I can actually type in hello world and then I use a vertical line to have another another line on the hologram, which is pretty, pretty damn cool. All right, that's the first thing. The other thing, I registered it in my main class. Don't forget to do that. I did it right here in the on enable method. And then, okay, and then I simply created this skeleton right here, as well as a helper class called hologram, which will simply take in the lines right here using this constructor. And then it has a spawn method on a or origin location, which is the start of it where the hologram will appear. And then it simply iterates for each line, nothing special, just basic knowledge of Java. I just wanted to save you time with the basics. Now, the lines right here, is going to be actually the arguments, but we have to change them a bit. So to create a new hologram class, just like this one, just type in new hologram, and then you can do hologram spawn at the player's location, that's it. However, this one needs the arguments. However, if I just copy paste the arguments right there, it is not gonna work properly because if I say slash hollow, hello world, then this is going to be one line and that is going to be one line. So all we have to do, we have to do a special trick. We have to actually join everything together first using string.join. And then the delimiter is going to be spaces. So we're going to be joining it by the spaces. Hello world, this is another line. So that we join everything together, just like this one, instead of this being one argument, right? That being the second, that being the third, fourth, fifth. Now it's all in one. And then afterwards, I can finally split it by using the vertical line. However, the split method takes in a regular expression, which is a different language. It's not Java. It's special, special way to say, deal with a sentences and create different filters. You can just Google about regular expressions. This is too much for this short video. But one thing I wanted to tell you is that you need to add two backslash slashes right here so that this one is parsed as a, a literal because otherwise this one has a special function in that regex scripting language. So now we're going to be simply splitting it by this separator. So then you'll end up with this one being one argument and that one being one argument. Hopefully that makes sense. And now inside right here, inside this little class right here, all we have to do is create a new hologram which is just going to be an armor stand. This is very simple. You just go to origin location get the world and then call the spawn method at the location where you want to spawn it. And then you type in the class. The class needs to be from org bucket and the package. Now you may have to make the stand not visible by setting set visible to false. Otherwise you will see the stand and also its name. And then also to prevent the hologram from falling down, which would be a bummer, especially with multiple lines, they would all stack up at the ground. We have to disable its gravity. And also you obviously don't want to make the hologram damaged by something by lava or whatever, or, you know, by some miraculous method. So it's a good practice to also set it to invulnerable. Now, finally, it's time to actually show the name on the hologram. So first thing we need to do, we need to set custom name visible to true. 
And then we actually need to set the custom name. Now, you know, as I, as you guys know, those of you that follow me, I like to use the new Adventure API. And if you guys want that, just see the Adventure video and then call the custom name method. Use the component right here. You can use mini message. However, it would be super, super long to use mini message. It would look three, four times as big. So I decided to Google a little bit and I came across this bungee cord pull request with this method right here called translate alternative color codes and hexes. I simply copied this whole method, created a new utility class called common. And then I simply placed it right here, renamed it to colorize. And then I put the alt color char from here. I placed it down here and I forced set it to be this. And this is really cool because not only it will finally let us translate these into these, such as you will be able to type in hello using this one and it's going to be in red, but also it supports hex colors so that you can just type in the end letter and then just type in hex, hex color hello and then it's going to, uh, you know, it's going to colorize the hello actually, which is really, really cool. So this is a fun utility method. I'm going to be posting a link to it in the description. Please make sure to give credit to the original author called Franker. And I can actually just, um, yeah, give credits right here. There we go. It is a long discussion. You don't have to go through all of it. Most, most of all, you just have to copy this method and you can read about how and what it does right here in the comment itself. So I'm going to be calling this method common that colorize magic method, save the day, save you at least 40 minutes, and then just uh, translate the line itself. Now note that each line is creating a new hologram. And then the hologram coming afterwards is actually using the original location and it's subtracting 0.25, which simply means that hello world is the first line. And then this is another line is the other line, which is actually 0.25 below the first line. Should there be th three lines, then it works like this one. You can obviously tweak it to your likings. If you want the lines to appear on top of each other, instead of using subtract, simply add. And maybe for good practice, it's not really the best to keep the hologram class inside the command class because it is simply hidden. I don't like the coding standard that I use there, so I can just paste it in the model package as well. And then I can just make it a public final class, fix the imports just like that. And there you go. And now we have to import it normally from our own package. And then hopefully it's going to work. Also make sure that the um, constructor is public. Awesome. Let's go into game. Let's type in hollow. And then the final line is going to be some nice color like this one. And there we go. Now we have a fully functional hologram. And if I disconnect, connect again, it is still there because Minecraft takes care of this automatically. If you type in stop, it'll save it. And then when you boot up to the game again, you'll see that again. Now, obviously, how do you get rid of that hologram? Well, you'd have to edit the spawn method a little bit, get the location of the armor stand, save it to a config file, maybe save it to a database, and then just get it from the database and then do something like this. So say that you want to delete the hologram at this origin location. So you would get the world and then you would get nearby entities using this origin location and then given radius. So I believe the X could be just one, the Z could be just one. And then the Y, I believe it's it's how much nearby it is going to be looking at uh, vertically. And maybe that has to be the amount of lines. So, so say that there is four lines, I'm going to be typing it four right here. Hopefully this is going to work. And then the location is going to be the actual location right here. And then you just iterate for all entities, right? And then if entity instance of armor stand, then you just type in entity dot remove and make sure to also import it. Now this can also interfere with real armor stands. I do recommend you check my other video about persistent metadata because here you can simply check if the entity get persistent data container has a custom tag, which makes it a special invisible tag, which marks it as our hologram so that you do not accidentally delete real player holograms. So this is just an idea on how to delete holograms. You'd have to implement some storage mechanisms so that you save their location later on. Guys, this is it for today. If you want to learn more about cool stuff like that, we have a course called Project Orient. Again, the link is in the description. It's a really amazing course. Can't wait to see you guys inside. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.